What's up, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael, and welcome to the next Skyrim build on Fudge Muppet. Firstly, a thank you to everyone who's been checking out our Fallout builds, and secondly, a reminder that Skyrim builds are, of course, going to continue, and that would be on a Sunday. The build is called The Apprentice, which we all know is a class from Oblivion, and the name of one of the standing stones in the game. As you can see, the race is a young, clean-looking red guard, so remember if this build gets a thousand likes in two days, we'll make a guide on how to make the pretty interesting face. The Apprentice grew up in Hammerfell and originated from a caring family, and has always been innocent, naturally athletic, and kind. Whilst he wasn't the best at magic, he always loved it, and so when he was deemed old enough and mature enough to leave home, his parents gave him their best wishes and sent him on his way. He departed for the College of Winterhold in Skyrim. In terms of his personality, the Apprentice is eager to learn, respects teachers, and of course wisdom. He's never rude and has plenty of morality. After being captured and carted to Helgen, the Apprentice escapes when the dragon attacks and he rushes off to Winterhold to learn. Unfortunately, he is rejected due to his lack of magical ability, and devastated, he leaves to travel around Skyrim to help those in need and harness his magic along the way. Doing random quests he stumbles upon, the apprentice becomes better at magic and believes he will soon be ready to be accepted at the college. Eventually, as the apprentice continues to learn new things, he finds himself in Riften when vampires attack the city. Using his new magical talents and staffs, he fights off the creatures and feels pressured by Jurak to help the Dawnguard, and so he accepts their first quest. Whilst eager to learn, the Apprentice's innocence makes him susceptible to influence, and sadly enough, when the Apprentice helps Serana get back to Harkin, he becomes very tempted by the vampire's offer. He is told of the magical prowess that such monsters contain, and so he gives in to Harkin to see what he can learn. Playing as a vampire, the Apprentice will do whatever he can to avoid doing evil things and fulfills the questline to help Serana, who he feels sympathy for. After finishing the vampire storyline, which to him turns into an experiment he's gradually regretting, he will finally do the quest to get the Ring of Erudite. Be sure to always pick the nicest options throughout Dawnguard and try to do the right thing. Eventually, however, the entire event makes the Apprentice feel shamed, and he falls into deep remorse. He feels really guilty and decides what he's done is wrong. His power to control the sun must be destroyed. Seeing as Serana isn't really fussed about her fellow vampires, the Apprentice decides to kill them all, except of course Serana, and he flees to find a cure. After he cures himself, he will spend more time doing good deeds in order to feel he has balanced his wrongs until finally he will decide to go back to the College of Winterhold, who will of course accept him without hesitation. The Apprentice will then do that storyline and harbour a burdening secret of his past decisions forever. Now however, he is on a moral and righteous path of retribution and is getting in touch with his former, happier self. After curing his vampirism, the Apprentice will keep the Ring of Erudite as a token of his past with Serana and also of course due to its powerful enchantment, which means this build won't be using the Apprentice Stone as the Ring does a similar sort of thing without any negative effects. The Apprentice will use the Lord Stone for magic resistance and armor rating, and has a stat spread of 60% Magicka to of course use spells, 30% Health to stay alive, and finally 10% Stamina to represent his natural athleticism, and also so it doesn't take ridiculous amounts of time to travel around on foot to all the various deeds and adventures he's gonna undertake. Skills for the Apprentice are Destruction, Alteration, and Restoration, and he will use all types of spells within these magic schools, so you can use wards, healing, detect life, water breathing, and all the different elements of destruction. Eastern schools of magic such as Conjuration won't be used, which fits in with the roleplaying of Redguard perspective and culture. The gear includes Adept Robes of Restoration, the ring we just talked about, and of course, any boots and any necklace you like. The necklace and boots will be enchanted with magic reduction for schools of magic of your choice using the final skill I haven't mentioned, enchanting. An enchanted circlet can also be used, however this is optional. Another option for those using the Dragonborn DLC would be to craft staves, which are also an important part of the apprentice's gear which I'll now discuss. Although using magic skills of his own, the apprentice will cycle between staves. The first and most basic staff is a destruction staff of your choice. This can be changed often, but we recommend the Dragon Priest Wall of Flame staff, which can be found in the ruins of Forelhost. The second staff we recommend comes from the Alteration Tree, and it is the staff of Paralysis. 
This is used for when Magicka is low to immobilize enemies and for eliminating extra Magicka cost which could be used for casting destruction. The third staff is the Staff of Mending which will be used to heal other aspiring mage companions. We recommend using various companions throughout the Winterhold questline and this works well with the role playing and also a semi healing playstyle. You would send an apprentice to do dangerous tasks without assistance. The final staff you'll have in your inventory is actually conjuration based but is used by the apprentice as it doesn't require him to actually use conjuration magic and it's basically to destroy conjured enemies. It's called the staff of expulsion and it's going to be handy to have around. Any other staffs such as the staff of mage light can be used but it's not really needed. The staff of magnus can also be used if you want to. As you can tell, there isn't an exact playstyle for the apprentice. Simply be diverse in your spells, use flesh cloaks and wards for protection, heal your companions, use detect life, cast runes, and combine alteration styles with destruction magic and vice versa, or even use the same school twice. Remember to find the balance between cycling through your staffs often and not depleting them too greatly. The character will often just use his own magical abilities. Something else to note is the fact that Soul Trap isn't used. This means that you'll actually have something to spend money on after you've acquired all the spells and gear that you need. And that wraps up this week's build, The Apprentice. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to check out our Fallout New Vegas builds if you're a Fallout fan or if you just haven't looked at them already. We love all your support and remember to leave a like if you want a face tutorial, subscribe to our channel if you haven't and share this video with all of your friends. The perk link is in the description next to our social media links which you can check out if you like. My name's Michael, this is Fudge Muppets Apprentice Build, and I'll see you soon.